What's up, guys? This is It's Real with Jordan and Demi. Today, we are going to come back to you in the new year, 2022, with someone who is trailblazing her way through the pop world with alternative sounds and uh, bringing something super fresh and real to the table. Please welcome Royal and the Serpent. Hi. Hi. Thank you what so much. What is going on? Hi. Not much. How are you guys doing today? We are good. We are good. I I, I love the, the 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 pink hair aesthetic thing you got going. Thank on. you. Yeah, I don't yeah, even know what often. colors are in it anymore. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Thank you. How often do you change colors? Um, do you dye? I mean, like a few times a year. I'm kind of getting over the red. What do you guys think I should do next? Maybe a. a I like flu fluorescent green is fun. Um, green is cool. Yeah, you because you, you've kind of done the fuchsia magenta yeah. thing. Yeah, so. I know, but I do have my one friend, Femme, is like, green's her thing. So I haven't, I've thought about green, but I'm like, I don't want to take that. Well, yeah, like you. the slime green, slime green. Yeah, I feel like yeah. everybody's got their own like color palette. And then I kind of feel like sometimes we just stick to it. It's weird. Yeah. So yeah. what's up with you today? What is it like a day in the life of Royal the Serpent? <laughs> well, this morning I woke up and I meditated and I pelotoned. And I took a sauna and a shower and what? here I am. <laughs> you did like a whole spa day in three hours. New year, new me, you know, I'm trying to like really be on it this year and like take care of myself. Cause I think it's so easy to forget to do the things for you, especially in this industry. Where we're so busy and we're always being asked to sort of like output. Um, but it's nice. And I'm trying to take the time to do things for myself as well. Yeah. So that and also that mental clarity helps out your songs and your music stuff too. Oh, hugely. Totally. Yeah. With like meditating and everything. Actually, one of the things I want to talk to you about is not to get deep too quick, but like spirituality. Yeah. I feel like you're a spiritual person. I, I feel that like when I see your interviews and things like that, are you a spiritual person? Is that what you consider? I absolutely am. Yeah. I think, um, I get a lot of it from my mom. I think I've learned a lot and I continue to learn a lot from her through the years of my life. And she's a very spiritual person. And I think that, you know, we're all connected on some level energetically. So I try to take that into my everyday life. I notice uh, you're a Gemini, correct? Yeah. Let's go. And that's kind of <laughs> the whole thing. The Royal and the Serpent is kind of a uh, two sides to a coin, Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing, Jim and I, you know, two, yeah. two, uh, two, two sides to a persona. Um, how else are you a true Jim and I? Cause see, I'm, I'm not much of an astrology person. I'm starting mm -hmm. to kind of like understand it. So yeah. how are you, can you explain that to me? Yeah. It's funny. My friends call it the serpent. Like when my other Gemini side comes out and it mostly comes out when I'm sleeping, like nobody ever wants to mess with me or wake me up because huh? I like, and for some reason, if I get woken up before I'm ready to wake up, and it's been this way since the day I was born, my mom used to call it Gemini Ryan when she would try to wake me up in the morning. Okay. But I'm just rotten. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not this. So the, 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 <laughs> the, so the, the two sides to the persona, that's not something you just kind of came up with. Uh, when you were making music, that's something that's been ingrained with you for years and years. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just who I am, I think. But I don't know. I think it's cool to like, I've been able to bring that in to the name Royal and the Serpent and talk about duality, which I think all of us have multiple mm -hmm. sort of versions of ourselves living within ourselves. Um, and so that's, I don't know, I was trying to take sort of like my own experience and bring it into the art so people could relate to it. That's crazy. Okay, we have an East Coast Girl in the building. All right, let's talk about the beginning, right? Growing okay. up yeah. in New Jersey. And yeah. then it's known that you came to LA at 18. Mm -hmm. um, bring us back to the beginning. Before, okay. before LA, talk about New Jersey. Before LA, I can't even believe like the upbringing that I had, I didn't realize would be as helpful as it is in what I do for a living. I grew up as a dancer, so I was on stages all the time from the time I was four years old until through high school. And then once I got into high school, I met a bunch of girls that were singers and songwriters and just messed around with guitars. And I learned how to play guitar and we would all write songs together. And we would like walk through the streets of our hometown with drums and guitars and just singing wow. these songs, um, which is very unique. I don't think I realized how unique 
of like a friend group I had until I moved out here. And I realized that that's totally not normal to have that many friends that have such beautiful voices. I felt like growing up, all my <laughs> friends could sing. And I was like, how did this happen? Um, so I think that influenced me so hugely um, because I actually moved out here at 18. I was not considering pursuing music. It was just sort of a hobby that I had, but it fell into my lap after a few years of being here um, and meeting my current manager now who heard me sing and he was like, we should do something with this. And here we are. Do you like LA? Me and Jordan are going to be there um, in a little bit. And you know, what's it like the LA scene? You know what I'm saying? It's different from the East Coast, mm -hmm. different vibe. Mm -hmm. you know? What do you think about it? I love LA. LA is definitely my home now. Um, I think it's my favorite place to be. I always miss it whenever I'm on the road and whenever I'm not here. Uh, I think you guys will like it. It's beautiful. I mean, the weather is always gorgeous. There's always something to do outside. There's tons of beautiful hikes. And I don't know, I think that there's a stigma around it that people are fake. But I also think you attract what you put out. And mm -hmm. so I have been blessed to not experience um, those kinds of people. I think everyone I've met here is so loving and so wonderful. Um, we should get together when you guys come out. Yeah, absolutely. Your, your latest single, Fuckboy Boy Rejects, is out. Mm -hmm. And it kind of has like a a pop punk vibe, but it's also like edgier. It's like harder. It's like pop. It kind of reminds me of like Avril Lavigne with like extra caffeine and extra Ooh. like <laughs> muscle behind it. Like a, mus uh -huh. a muscular Avril Lavigne, I guess. Uh, <laughs> So tell us about making this song and what you <laughs> found you wanted to achieve. Uh, a muscular Avril Lavigne. That's incredible. Um, I wrote this song. Okay. So the truth of the matter is, which I can't believe I'm about to say this right now. I had a crush on this guy and I tried to kiss him one night. Oh my God. I can't believe I'm saying this. Um, and he like denied me. And I, uh, immediately the next morning like couldn't get these lyrics out of my head I was like beating myself over the head with these lyrics that I needed to get out and so I hit up like all of my homies that are songwriters and I was like we got to get in the studio today and I got some of the coolest people in the room and we made this song and um man I mean it's crazy looking back now because I'm actually in like a very wonderful loving relationship but at the time I just was so over the fuckery, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, so I think that angst really was able to come out in the lyricism. And I don't know, I think I've always just really loved telling the truth in little details. It's like one of my favorite parts about songwriting. So you get some good like jabs and punches uh, in there. Do you think that story kind of sounded like something you might bring up in a conversation about a boy? Oh, Wait, say, mean, that, you know say that one more time. That's one of my favorite things to talk about is like girl talk. I always get sidetracked with girl talk. What's your type of guy? Like for anyone who's going to hear this, yeah. uh, get ready because she's about to tell you what you need to fit into. So what, <laughs> yeah, what's your type? What you need okay. to fit into. So my type is my perfect cute boyfriend that I have right now. His name is B and he's just perfect for me. He's covered in tattoos and he's a skinny little mini and he's super feminine. And I think we were actually just talking about types last night. I think typically whether it's, a girl or a boy or neither. I really love people that are unique looking and that just own who they are. And um, that shows through to me more than people that are like conventionally attractive or I don't know. I like people that are different. Tattoos are a plus always. Oh, a hundred percent. Tattoos are a must. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get confused when a guy doesn't have a tattoo. I'm like, wait, so... What am I gonna work with here? It's like, yeah, I'm always, yeah, I'm always suspicious. Like, what, why don't you have a tattoo? It's yeah, like, yeah, it's a little sketchy. Do I, like, I don't trust you if you don't have a tattoo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what <laughs> kind of what what happened in your childhood that prevented you yeah. from this happening? Yeah, who's you know? not letting you get a tattoo? That's mm -hmm. the question. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's funny when you mentioned about like generically attractive people. I feel like when you come across like a generically hot person who yeah. looks like someone you'd see on like the cover of a fashion magazine, or yeah. like like the GQ type guy, like with the square jaw, yeah. it feels like they're like a representative of hot people and they're not a real person or something. Yeah. You know it makes saying? me angry. I'm like, it's not fair. You shouldn't look like that. Give some to the rest of us. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uncool. Yeah. Or just get a tattoo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. yeah. Oh. 
I, yeah, I had a friend in college who was like really good looking and he kind of like hated it. He was like, I'm going to grow out my hair and I want to get some glasses and I'm going to, yeah. I'm like, no, you won't. You are, you're having too much fun with your Abercrombie self. Like you're not, uh -huh. you're not going to do that. You get it. You Speaking get it. of tattoos and boys, you did a collab with BSD mm -hmm. called Lucid Dreams. Yeah. And um, I was just out there in LA and I actually heard of them. Um, they're a band making waves in LA and like the scene over there. So tell us how that collab came about and what's it like working with those guys? They seem like, you know, a lot of energy. They are, they have become like over the past year, my best friends on earth. And um, it's been so cool. We actually all met because I hired two of them to be in a music video of mine last year. No and um, we just like hit it off, became really fast friends, ended up doing some live performance stuff together. And then eventually we took them on tour and they were my band for the last tour that I did. And we just had such a blast. I fell in love with my current boyfriend who was in the band. And um, I mean, they're just incredible. We made that collab together. I mean, late last year, um, we all love Juice World, and it was such a tragedy, um, his passing, and we wanted to sort of, I don't know, memorialize him with our art in a way and, and give something back. So it's been really fun playing that song on tour. People have been really liking it, and we just wanted to give something to our fans as like a gift. How are you with fan interaction? Do you like interacting with fans? Do you like, you know, answering questions from fans, signing autographs, hanging out at the merch table? Like, what's your deal I with that? I honestly think that of all the things I get to do, that is my favorite part of this job. And it's the only part that makes it worth it because without having that sort of connection and without getting that like real, I don't know, there's something, there's something raw and real about it. And when you get to connect with people, it makes everything you do mean something. Otherwise we're just making art for no one. And we're just putting shit out for no one. And when I get to, look through my DMs and see how I've changed people's days or their weeks or their years with something that I made. It's like, it gives it purpose. And I don't know, without it, I think I would get very depressed. And I'm very, very grateful that I get to see my fans um, and talk to them. And it makes all the hate also like, because I think as an artist, you get both, you get a lot of haters and you get a lot of lovers. And I think the lovers make the haters smaller. Well, I think there's haters who are just out there to hate, no matter, even if they really don't care, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. What's that? What's that? Um, I was thinking of this quote about haters, but now one mm -hmm. thing I really love about your work is you kind of say things that people are afraid to talk about or to say or to be open about. You talk about anxiety, you talk about, you know, Growing up on Apple Jacks, I think he said something like, mm. like that. Um, yeah. Talk about drugs and just kind of like you're really, you just say what you want to say. Um, is it, what's that process like for you when you're putting that onto a record? And is that something that comes easy to you? Or do you ever feel like, oh my God, the song is about to come out. He's going to know it's about him. Um, mm. You know what I'm saying? All the time. Yeah, it's terrifying actually. Putting music out is so scary and sometimes... I mean, it's exciting, but I think also excitement and fear sort of have like the same energy and they're actually very similar. We just like to confuse them for one another. But um, I don't know. It's totally scary telling the truth, but I also think it's really important because it helps facilitate sort of a safe space for other people to tell the truth and be themselves and be honest with themselves and the people around them. And I think that that's what I'm hoping to do just by example, by like doing it on my own, because it's challenging. You know, I think pushing ourselves to be honest in certain ways isn't always easy, but I think the reward at the end of the day is worth it. Now, uh, Royal, I know that you like throwback music. You like music from different decades. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm assuming your, your parents kind of influenced that. And I don't know what you were exposed to. We'll get to that later. We'll talk about your old school preferences a little bit, cool. but you know, you're, you're what, 27. Is that correct? Correct. Exactly. So that means you kind of like were a little kid in the, um, in like the early two thousands. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that you had this Avril Lavigne kind of influence on that. And I feel like there's something to the idea of the music you listen to when you're first listening to the radio, you know, like when you're a little, mm -hmm. little kid, you listen to like little kid songs, like, mm -hmm. you know, row, 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 your boat, old McDonald, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when you're like, 
five, six, seven, you kind of start paying attention to what's on the radio. So mm -hmm. it's kind of your on-ramp. Mm -hmm. So your musical on-ramp was like early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Do you like that kind of music? Like what did you listen to when you were a little kid that kind of like implanted yeah. in your brain moving forward, you know? Yeah, oh my gosh. I mean, well, firstly, Avril Lavigne was my queen. She was everything to me. Uh, and Good Charlotte to this day is still one of my favorite bands. And I Damn, have I really grew up on, long time. oh my gosh, Good Charlotte. I mean, they own Alt Press, like they're crushing it. Those boys are Oh, they made so much money like after their music stopped being popular. Yeah. I mean, they're, I still go back and listen to those songs. You know, I, I was thinking of even covering the anthem for my upcoming tour. I'm like obsessed with Good Charlotte still to this day. But yeah, I think like the pop punk rise was huge in that time. And even when I got into high school, I got more into like a day to remember. And uh, the phrase the bands, as I call them, the bands that are have phrases for names. Exactly. Yeah. My Chemical Romance. I mean, come on. Yeah. Iconic. Yeah, I don't know. And then I think there's also this really huge culture around it now with emo night and all that stuff. Um, that's been really fun to like. That's that LA thing, right? Emo night. Yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about emo night. I'm like, you're not even yeah. I'm like, are you emo. Like, are, should you go like. Uh -huh. But it's, it's so thing. fun. It's so cool. cool. Yeah. We're like revitalizing yeah. emo music. It's so cool. Yeah. What do, do you think about that coming back? Like the fact that you can be an alternative artist in 2022 and break into the mainstream. Um, how do you, how does that, does that excite you? Does that scare you? I think it really excites me because for a long time I had no idea what kind of music I wanted to make. I mean, I still kind of feel that way, but once rock and pop punk and a lot of that started slowly trickling back in, I think it made me that much more excited for my job and for what I get to do every day um, because I wasn't really connecting with some of the other styles that I think I was chasing after. And I feel like I'm slowly finding like my pocket and what excites me to create. And so I'm really, really happy that rock is on the rise. Yeah. I think it's interesting. You know, I, I described that song as muscular Avril Lavigne. Um, and what I think is, I feel like two, three years ago, people were just kind of like, regurgitating pop punk sounds mm -hmm. and i feel like now we're ending that era where people are messing with it people are screwing with it a little bit that yeah. because when you when you revitalize a sound mm -hmm. there's kind of the the nostalgia part like oh this sounds like good charlotte but then there's like a point where you've got to like what are we going to do with this new tool how are we going to make it our own mm -hmm. so that's like kind of a thing you you're probably working with now is like what am i going to do with this guitar sound you know mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very lucky too. I feel like I have so many amazing producers sort of like in my close sphere of friends that are so innovative and so explorative in like all the ways that you're saying. And it's been super fun to like bring hyper pop and some of these new sounds into the rock and roll scene and like see what kind of weird music babies we can all make. Yeah. How do you feel about the term hyper pop and the whole like or crack pop. around it? What's it called? Crack pop? You've Is that heard what they're calling pop? it? No, uh, is that what they're pop, calling it? <laughs> I like crack pop. I think I'm going to call it that from now on. I mean, I love it. I, I love anything that's weird, pretty much. If it's weird and it's different, count me in. Um, I mean, some of my favorite artists last year, like Corpse. I mean, I don't even know if you consider that hyper pop, but he's like so yeah. weird and so cool. Do you, have you heard of Corpse? He did a collab with Machine Gun Kelly, right? I think so, probably. That's my favorite that MVP sense. song. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so good. But yeah, the weirder the better. I'm all for it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we, we touched on your aesthetics a little bit, but um, I want to bring up, you just, you released a single, like, what, a month or two ago, a music video for um, for uh, I'm Not Sorry, where you mm -hmm. used the, the Joker makeup, and that was in your imagery. Uh, I think we have a photo of that. Yeah, oh, of, of the, you with the Joker makeup. It looks super <laughs> dope. And now, and you, you took th those photos, the Joker photos away from your Instagram mm -hmm. and now you, you've cleared the deck and your, um, your imagery now is with kind of the pink, um, the pink hair and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So are you one of those people who constantly has to be reinventing yourself? I mean, th that was only a couple months ago and you're completely mm -hmm. like, no, that that's over. This is the new thing now. So it's actually all a part of the same story, funnily enough, in my brain, at least. It's all sort of like this journey since I released this song uh, back in August called Go Fuck Yourself. 
And the song basically is a story about how I crashed my car on the 405, died, went to heaven, met the bouncer, and he wouldn't let me in. And so he sent me to hell. And ever since then, I've been in this like state of purgatory where I'm exploring all these different characters, if you will. So I put out a song called Chips and I explored sort of a zombie character. Um, I put out I'm Not Sorry and I explored this like villainous Joker character. Um, and then in, uh, I'm sorry, what's the song that's out now? Fuckboy Rejects. It's <laughs> Fuckboy Rejects. <laughs> I love it. We're I in love this it. like. Because <laughs> I like, I, I just had to look up the song title that was yeah. associated with the, with the Joker makeup and now I don't feel yeah. so bad. Now I don't yeah, no, so no. Bad. Don't ever feel bad. I can't even get the words right half the time to my own songs. Um, in go in Fuckboy Rejects, I'm exploring this like all white purgatory sort of space, like a liminal space. Um, in a mental institution. And I think what I'm really trying to facilitate is this idea that I'm exploring all of these different parts of my mind, where we would be if we were in purgatory or where I would be if I was in purgatory. Um, and I think a lot of the subjects are like also surrounding death. So I was thinking of doing like a vampire theme potentially for something that's coming next. We'll see, we're building it slowly, but yeah. Will you ever do like an angelic? Will you ever go back to the bouncer? And maybe it's like a different bouncer or bouncer maybe you like go to the back door. Is there going to be something? You're giving away the plot, Demi. You're giving away the yeah, plot. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, the plan is to put this project out and then come back to life and revitalize myself and reinvent myself again. I think um, to answer your question, even on like, do I feel like I need to reinvent myself constantly? Yes. Mm. I think it's like the one of the more exciting parts of, um, what I do. And I think Bowie is a huge influence for me in that way. It's always fun when you get to play another character. I think it's hard to be only yourself all the time and not get bored when you are making art. And so I think one of my most enjoyable ways of performance art is by sort of playing a different character every time I have a new something coming out. And because of the social media world we live in, visual culture has accelerated so quickly. Like um, something you did yeah. a month ago is like old news. I imagine like, Wild. imagine if like Madonna had come up in this era, she would have been changing her haircut and her makeup mm -hmm. like once a, it would have been crazy. Yeah. So, I, you know, but it's kind of fun. I feel like you enjoy changing those yeah. characters up. Yeah, absolutely. It is wild how fast things move these days. I think like even just the speed that a song has a lifespan. It's like after a month, okay, it's on to the next thing. And it's it's wild, but it is fun. It is fun. And you have uh, now Fuckboy Ridge is part of a, a, an EP that's coming out soon, right? Yeah, I'm so excited. And what else is on the EP that has, how much music is on the EP that hasn't been released yet? How many new songs will there be? There will be, there's the, <laughs> The release that is coming out this month will have six songs and two of the songs will have been out already. Some of them people will have heard on tour. There's one song particularly that everybody's been begging me for, and that will be the lead single. And then we will have a surprise for you maybe a month later. You did like the Mr. Burns fingers, the like the spider fingers, like yeah, you're up to something. Mm -hmm. I'm up to something, always up to something, yeah. I want to talk about, because you do, you're one of those artists like Porches. We had a conversation with him about how he likes to play with different characters, with different releases. And how do you kind of, I mean, how do we separate you from your artist, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Is there a separation or? There has to be. I think there has to be. And I think even some of the things that we touched on um, earlier in the conversation, the things that I did this morning, you know, my time, taking time that is specifically for Ryan and not Royal um, is what helps that separation because it is really easy to get lost in all of it. And especially on, I, I touch on a lot of dark subjects, I think, and it can be really easy to sort of get caught up in that and to be in a dark place. Um, when you're messing with the things that I'm messing with, like subjects of death, let's say, yeah. um, I think it is a slippery slope. And so I've really been trying, especially this year, uh, new year, um, to make sure that I'm taking time for Ryan too. 
yeah, I, I was curious about, you know, you're mentioning all the characters and theatricality and it kind of reminds me, there's almost like a Alice Cooper kind of seventies, even like you think about prog bands like Genesis would have these huge, like intricate backstories about characters and stuff. And, and I was wondering how much influence you've taken from, you know, those kinds of things. And, and also I think about, you want to become big, not just so you can have your songs well known, but also more. The more you, uh, the bigger you become, the bigger budget you'll have for like fancier costumes and bigger stage shows and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, how? What is the the ceiling on the theatricality of of mm -hmm. all the, the the stuff you're putting out? Oh my gosh! I mean, uh, hopefully it never ends. I think um, the farther along we go, you're exactly right. The more that we get to do, and the more fun we get to have. And the more people we get to bring on to help share ideas, I think, you know, I'd be nothing without my collaborators. It's none of it is all me. I'm very, very blessed to work yeah. with incredible creatives. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the goal ultimately is to continue telling a story so I can continue telling a story for the rest of my life. It's um, music videos are one of my favorite things that I get to do. And I think I get to tell really incredible stories there. And the bigger we get, the more money we get and the crazier videos. I think eventually I'd love to do film and I'd love to. Let's go. Yeah. I, I love you directing like a as well. style visual wow. album with like yeah, a yeah. video for that's every goals. track. Yeah. That's, I've always wanted to do that and I've never had the funds to be able to fully execute it the way that I want it. So I've kind of been saving that, but every project I've ever put out, I'm like, let's put out a short film and never works mm. out, but we'll get there. Yeah. One of my favorite things to talk about on the show and it's more so for your fans is mm -hmm. um ryan like aside from making your music we know you do yoga we know you're spiritual but what's something about you that maybe your fans don't know just by hearing your music or seeing a show what are what are some things about just you like minus the music i think probably something that people wouldn't like peg necessarily from me is that I actually do have a lot of insecurities. I think I, um, it's easy for me to like put on a face and, and put on this like air of confidence because it's a part of my job. But I think at the end of the day, I struggle with loving myself the same way that I think everybody does. Um, and I don't know, I just feel like that's important for them to know because so many people I think struggle with feeling good about themselves and having confidence and walking through life with their head heads up and I don't know I just want people to feel that or to know that they're not alone in those feelings and that we're all just human you know and just because I'm on a stage dancing my ass off doesn't mean that um I am any better or know anything more or any of that shit I'm, I'm human just like everybody else and I'm working through my own darkness and my own demons every day uh I don't know yeah what you just made me think of someone like Kurt Cobain, who like probably felt the same way, right? And then no one knew until the day that he passed that he was feeling this way. And I actually commend you for being able to talk about this so openly because you probably are helping a lot of people out there that are like, wait, my idol actually feels this way too? Like, what the hell? Like, okay, maybe I'm not crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that's pretty cool that you're sharing that with the world. It's important, you know, I think, one of my like main goals in making art and in making music has always been to make people feel less alone in the things that they feel, because I think there's a stigma around what we can talk about. And I don't know, I think we put all these people that are like artists, famous, whatever, on these pedestals, influencers, whatever you want to call people that have any sort of platform. Mm -hmm. um, but we put them on pedestals as if they don't feel the same things as everybody else. We're all just doing our best, you know? Kind of going off of that, you know, your your breakout song, Overwhelmed, really touched a lot of people and made a big impact both in the music industry and um, I'm sure a lot of your followers and fans. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you look back at that song now, how do you feel about it both musically and lyrically? Uh, I actually just like got chills thinking about it. It's it's um it changed my life. It's my truth. It's you know, it's touched so many people and I think I, I can't I, like the amount of gratitude I feel for the creation of that song, the execution of putting it out, um, how many people that it's touched, like 
it's it's made me who I am today in so many ways. So I'm just eternally grateful that I had that opportunity to create the song and to put it out and that people connected with it. Do you remember the night before that song came out? Like, were you like, did you have any idea? Yeah, I mean, I had no idea. And I was terrified to put it out. Wow. It was it was like height of pandemic. There was a lot of really terrible things going on in the world and especially in our country. And I was terrified of taking any attention away from anything that felt more important than me. And I remember calling my mom and asking her for help because I was so scared because I didn't want to take attention away from the things that felt just larger. Um, and she had me sort of like do a journaling exercise about it and talk about where I felt guilty and why and sort of like dissect some of the things I was feeling and um, ultimately turned it around to how can I serve and how can I make this not about me and how it can help other people rather than it being about me at all. And I think that energy going into it actually is what ultimately made it the song that it was. So, Roy, we got to go here pretty soon, but we have a little game. Dimmy wants to play a little question and answer game. With you. <laughs> okay. Give either this person or that person a magical royal potion mm -hmm. in which they come back from the dead and collab with you on your next album. Boom. Mm. Simple as that. All right as fast as you can without thinking, Kurt Cobain or Jimi Hendrix? Oh, Kurt Cobain. Janis Joplin or Elvis Presley? Janis Joplin. Damn. All right. Tupac or Prince? Prince. Free girl. You get John free Lennon free or Jeff Buckley? <gasps> oh, that's hard, but John Lennon. <laughs> All right. Bob Marley or Freddie freaking Mercury? Oh, uh, Freddie Mercury. All right, X Tentacion or Juice World? Oh, that is so hard, but I have to go with Juice World. Yeah. All right, Sid Vicious or Pop Smoke? <laughs> Sid Vicious. My cat growing up was named after Sid Vicious. Is he That's a great cat name. That's a good cat name. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You win. <laughs> you win the game. I win. Thank you. Thank you for playing. Yeah, but you know it's, it's it's funny, Royal. Some people just go on instinct. Some people think about logistics. Like you would pick Prince oh. over Tupac, maybe because he could play all these instruments, and you would have some. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So See, kind of I had to thing. pick Prince because Prince is my mom's favorite artist of all time. So it's like, no way. if maybe my mom could meet Prince, that was that was my goal. In, in the yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we got to let you go. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. This was such a pleasure. And remind us, uh, when is the EP coming out? January 28th. January Let's 28th. Go. We're on the surfing EP. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Bye. We're on the serpent, everybody. Yes. Yes, yes. All right. So, Demi, we didn't say um, Happy New Year. This is our first show of the new year. So, Happy New Year. Happy freaking New Year, guys. We're going to get crazy this year. We're going to have wilder guests, crazier questions, and Jordan's going to take off his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what that was. What that was that came out of there. nowhere. Okay. I have been, I have, I have been like do, working out a little bit. I've got a little New Year's resolution workout. That's what I'm saying. On. That's what I was going with that. So mm -hmm. Watch out. Watch mm -hmm. out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So if you want to listen to our show, uh, go to Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Apple Music, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also watch clips and past episodes on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and clips on Instagram and uh, TikTok as well. So until next week, we'll see you later.